by special request, I am doing a video on the topic of the religion of self. So I've touched on this briefly in a previous video, but the religion of self, the way that I see it is basically where it's a, a conglomeration of beliefs that make up um, our self-definition. So it's all the things that I tell myself I am, all the, the I am thoughts that I have, the, the self-judgments, the self-definitions. I'm good at this, I'm bad at that. I, um, I'm worth this, I'm not worth that. I'm, um, I'm ugly, I'm pretty, I, this part of me is nice, that part of me is not nice. Um, all of these different thoughts that we tend to kind of turn into mantras, like we say them to ourselves over and over and over and over so many times that it, it's almost like it solidifies the more that we tell ourselves that this is what I am, the more we become it. And that's, I think, the most interesting thing that shows both the absolute creative principle that we actually are as well as the absolute point of powerlessness and giving up of responsibility that we've allowed because everything comes back to how we are creating ourselves what thoughts we are participating in what thoughts we are allowing within ourselves what beliefs we are um, entertaining within ourselves what we're resisting and instead of changing our relationship towards these things that we resist, we allow it to become a point of conflict, which makes it bigger and bigger and more and more. And eventually it can get to a point where um, it, it actually becomes a part of who we are. And let me go a bit more into the, the, the two opposites of what this point, what I see within it. So let's start with powerlessness and abdication of self-responsibility. What I've noticed that uh, tends to happen is that when I'm thinking to myself, this is what I am, it's just the way that I am. Um, I can't help being this way. I, um, I'm never going to attain this because I am that way. All of these I am statements that I tell myself that I use as excuses to not actually ever do anything, to not push anything, to not challenge myself to change, to, um, to make my weaknesses stronger because I'm just so set on keeping things the way they are and just kind of like being okay with all the, 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 the different things that I am because I was just made this way. Now that's obviously how the belief works. It doesn't, I'm not actually saying that this is how we are made and that we are made in certain ways. We are the products of a whole lot of different factors. Um, we have levels of physical as well as let's call it mind programming, that all these different pieces and parts and components and cogs and wheels come together to form the entirety of who we are. And within this, this abdication of self-responsibility when it comes to how we see ourselves and what we believe we are and who we believe we are, um, we place the power of of change into this concept of um, being made a certain way or just being a certain way as if we don't have any control over that as if we can't change ourselves as if this is just who I am and that's never going to change and the only thing that's going to change it is some outside miracle happening to me and making and and, and making change happen um, so that's the, the powerlessness side of it. And then on the other side, the creative principle side, 
what is so interesting uh, and so sad at the same time is that we so completely believe and become these thoughts that we keep telling ourselves, these beliefs, these self-definitions, that the more we feed these thoughts, the more we become them in the physical. We actually act those things out. So um, if it's thoughts of inferiority, I'm not good enough, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not popular enough, I don't have the good thing, uh, the, I won't know what to say, I won't know how to communicate with people, I'm just going to say something stupid. All of these different thoughts that we're telling ourselves, it turns into when we're in those particular situations, so let's say, in a social situation where that inferiority experience and definition and belief is, is triggered, all of those thoughts are going to start churning, right? And our behavior is going to be um, manifesting according to those thoughts. So where maybe I, I would stand quietly in a corner somewhere trying to not make eye contact with anyone and just generally being awkward or... Um, blurt out silly things that uh, I, I say just because I'm insecure and that ends up um, being something that I use as more ammunition against myself because that was so stupid. Obviously I said that because I'm such a retard in social situations, blah, blah, blah. So that's one example of it. But um, And maybe one that's kind of easy to see. But there's also these other moments in our lives where we really become these self-definitions and I'm going to take something like um, I'm going to take a difficult topic difficult not because it's hard to talk about but difficult because it's kind of the ugly side of humanity um, okay so how about this inferiority but in the context of someone who feels inferior and the only way that they help themselves help themselves or can make themselves feel superior is by doing the opposite of that by um, trying to impose their apparent power on other people so maybe a husband who beats their wife or, or, or kids or wife who beats her, her husband and kids um, or someone who uh, enjoys making people feel small uh, and that that dynamic is like because I feel this way inside myself I feel so completely insecure and inferior and small and worthless I'm going to make someone else feel that. I'm going to pretend to be the opposite of this and force someone else to experience what I'm feeling. It doesn't, however, change the inferiority. It doesn't make that go away. And that's why people who rely on that kind of behavior keep going back to it and, and doing it over and over and over again because they keep needing to get that fixed because it doesn't actually solve anything. And you see the inferiority come out in the small moments where, for example, um, I might take everything as being an attack on my, on my character or my person or an attack on, on me personally somehow and, and interpret uh, any particular remark as being something that's said against me and that interpretation comes from my belief of all of these things that I am like um, I'm already attacking myself with all of those things that this person's just said and what they've just said has essentially in my mind reiterated all of these things I already knew I was and you know we're going to have different ways of responding to it and in different situations, we'll have different ways of responding to that. Sometimes I might internalize that and just say, yes, you see, I am these things. I am these things and keep becoming that and solidifying that self-definition even more and more. Or in some situations, I might try to um, 
flip the script and launch an attack on the other person to try and defend myself and make them feel bad. But at the end of the day, I'm still feeling inferior. That reaction comes from the, that inferiority. That's the point that I'm getting to. Um, we react in ways that is defined by these different self-definitions. Um, and if we compare that to in a situation where someone says something and I'm not reacting, I can just simply look at the information that was, that was spoken and respond in a calm and stable manner without attacking or judging or any of those things. Because my internal reaction trigger thing was not set off and if it was set off, maybe I didn't follow through with that reaction. I didn't go down the rabbit hole and um, get tangled up in it. I let it pass over me and, and only responded when I was stable. So, right. Um, how do we deal with this religion of self? Well, it's not, I can't say that there's like one thing that you can do that makes it all go away because it isn't. It's a whole lot of different factors. It's a whole lot of self definitions, a whole lot of beliefs about myself, a whole lot of thoughts about myself. And um, we have to deal with each one of those and redefine ourselves in a way that um, we want to, in a way that honors our best potential, in a way that works on strengthening our weaknesses and um, uh, making our strengths even stronger. So, sorry, as always, there's no quick, easy fix. There's no magic wand here. Um, practice that awareness of the thoughts that come and especially flag the words, I am. Whenever I think I am, I go, oh, red flag, something's coming. Um, some belief about myself, some definition about myself, something is, is happening in this point. And then when it does happen, um, reflect on it, investigate it, see what is it, where does it come from, what is it attached to, is it um, attached to inferiority or anxiety or anger or fear or whatever. And um, as you start pulling on that one twine that unravels this huge never-ending ball, <laughs> well it does eventually sometimes end, sometimes for a little while. <laughs> no, but seriously, things do get easier. Um, we'll come to that point in a different time. So uh, if I hope that that answers your question about the religion of self. If not, ask me a specific question and I will give you a specific answer. Thank you very much for watching. You're going to see me next time.